When you're using Reason, there are times when you'd like to be able to combine or split apart audio as well as control voltage or CV information. And to do this, we need to use spider devices. I'm going to give you a couple examples of how to use spider devices in this video. To start with, I have a subtractor and a Thor pad. Now each of these instruments is sent to its own channel of my mixer, but wouldn't it be nice to have one channel to mix all of my pads, basically to submix them, pan them together, send them to effects together, and so forth. And to do that, we will use a spider merger. So let's add a spider. We want the audio merger, because we're merging audio information. And if we flip it around, you will see that there are four inputs on the left-hand side and one output. Anything that goes into the inputs will be merged and come out the outputs. If something comes in mono, Spider will automatically convert it to stereo or send it out both the left and right outputs. And of course, a stereo input will be sent out stereo. So I'm sending in my subtractor and my Thor. What's coming out of the Spider will be a single mixed instrument. And let's name it. We'll call it Pad Submix. You can see the indicator lights. And up in the mixer, there is my Pad Submix. I can control the level, the panning, solo, mute it, send it to an aux effect, and so forth. So that's one quick example of where a spider comes in very handy. Another example is where I want to send both the devices I have here to a single effect. So this time, instead of sending my spider output to my mixer, I'm going to send it to a distortion effect. Let me do a little recabling here. It thinks the Thor is going to the distortion, so I'll just drag those away. I could have held down my shift key when I added the distortion, and then Reason would not have auto-routed it, but that's okay, we can do it ourselves. Let's send the Thor back to the spider, and let's send the output of the spider now to our distortion input, and the output of the distortion is what will go to our mixer. So now both my subtractor and my Thor are merged, sent through the spider to the distortion, and back to the mixer. That's bypassed and that's with the distortion. So the audio merger is great when you want to combine two audio devices to mix them together or perhaps to send them to the same effect. But now what if I wanted to send the devices to two different effects at the same time? Well, we need to use the splitter side of the spider. So let me get rid of all of this. And what we'll do now is we'll take a single input Let's take just our Thor pad, and we want to send it to the distortion effect and to a phaser at the same time. So I bring it into the right-hand side there, and you can see it's going to be split to up to four devices. So the first device is my distortion, and you can see the cabling there, and that will go to my mixer. And then I'll add another effect, this time a phaser, and I didn't hold down the shift key, so it thinks the phaser is going to follow the distortion, but we don't want that. We want the split signal, the Thor, to go to the phaser. One signal to two effects, and now both effects are going to my mixer, and now I can mix the phased sound and the distorted sound separately. Here we are up in the mixer. Let's take a listen. That's just my phase sound. And that's just my distorted sound. So the splitter works great whenever you have one audio signal that you want to go to multiple places. And as you can see, we can have four outputs 
from our splitter, and we can have four inputs into our merger. So this is a very useful device. Now let's delete all this and let's try something else. I'm going to add a gated effect to the subtractor, something that makes it turn on and off quickly so I get a rhythmic pattern. And I'll use my matrix for that. What we'll do is we'll take out the note and gate information. We don't really need that, but we're going to send curve information to the amplifier level and make sure the amp level is all the way up. Of course, when the curve is all the way up, that will mean I get a full amplifier signal. If, on the other hand, there is no curve, it's zero, that means I've got no signal. And what we'll get is a rhythm. So I've got a simple rhythm defined, and the length of the bar determines the amplitude. I've started my matrix, but I'm not hearing any sound. Let's flip the rack around and see if you can figure out why. Did you notice that the subtractor output wasn't cabled? Now we're hearing it, and you can hear this gated effect. So that's pretty cool, but what if I wanted to send that same gated effect to my Thor? Well, this isn't audio information, this is CV information. So I can't use my spider audio splitter, but I can use my spider CV merger and splitter. Now the CV merger and splitter looks very similar to the audio merger and splitter. On the right hand side is my splitting section. You'll notice there are two splits there. Each one can be sent to three places plus one place inverted. So I'm sending in my matrix, the curve CV from the matrix into the split and out from the split, I'll go to my amplitude of my subtractor and I'll take another one of my splits and go to the amplitude level of my Thor. And I'll send the output of the Thor up to the mixer. And now what we're doing is we're taking a single device, the matrix, and we're splitting the CV information to both my Thor and my subtractor. That's just the Thor. That's just the subtractor. And of course, I can lower my amplitude level here so it doesn't affect the Thor as much as it does the subtractor. So anything you can do with CV, you can do with the CV merger and splitter. So it works with the matrix as well as any other CV device. And you'll notice two splits. Each one can send to three places plus a fourth place inverted. The more you work with Reason, the more opportunities you'll find to use the spider devices, the audio merger and splitter, and the CV merger and splitter.